Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Kenyon Jones, and today's topic is go get it. <laughs> yes, sir, go get it. Uh, I sit here right now on uh, the, 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 the streets of Edgecombe Avenue, uh, St. Nicholas Avenue between West 136 and West uh, 135th Street, Harlem, New York. Some people call it Harlem, USA. Uh, I sit here um, all the way from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm all Brooklyn. I'm all East New York, um, all the way. And uh, I just finished coming out of a very productive uh, meeting of entrepreneurs. And um, judging by the outer appearances of the way the building looked, you know, nobody would think that what was going on inside that um, place was 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 a life changing opportunity. You know, it was a, a an opportunity to uh, really be on the ground floor. Not so much the ground floor, but uh, ground floor from from where we stand. You know, of an opportunity to to really build wealth and change your life. You know, and and the reason why I'm so excited about it, and the reason why I'm so enthused, and I have so much. Uh, of a, a, a strong inflection in my voice is because opportunities are seldom loud. What do I mean by that? An opportunity to change our lives seldom makes a huge announcement. You know, it, it, it never really shouts at us. It never really jumps out at us. It's not something that uh, has bright colors or uh, something that... Um, you know, uh, that we notice right away, but opportunities are subtle, you know what I'm saying, like, they're, um, they're quiet, you know, I would even say that sometimes opportunities are polite, and if we're not trained to see opportunities, then we can easily allow great opportunities to pass us by, so I'm reminded about an acronym for the word poor that I heard, um, you know, one of my mentors used, and they said that poor stands for passing over opportunities repeatedly. You know what I'm saying? Now, poor doesn't necessarily mean you don't have money. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you don't have access to money. It doesn't mean that you don't have houses, cars, whatever, you know, but poor in that sense, when we talk about passing over opportunities repeatedly, poor represents poor mindset. You know, poor decision making, you know, um, we know a bunch of people that are millionaires financially, but make poor decisions over and over and over and over and over again. You know, so uh, being poor is not so much what's not in your pocket. Being poor is what's not in your head. You know, what is not going on inside your head? You know, when an opportunity presents itself, you know, what type of decisions are you making? You know, are you just letting it go over your head because, you know, you don't understand what you're looking at or are you letting it go over your head because you're thinking, wow, nah, this ain't real, this is not official, you know? So we got to really be mindful of how we're thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like how we're really, you know, um, viewing what's going on around us, you know? Um, the thing that I'm reminded about over and over again is how come some people do well and some people don't, you know? How come some people, you know, achieve you know, success at dizzying heights and some people don't, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the things that, um, I will spend the rest of my life trying to figure out, you know, because we all have 24 hours in a day, you know, as long as we're alive, we all get seven days, you know, as long as we're here, you know, we always get 365 days a year, you know, except for in the case of a leap year where we get an extra day. You know, so how come all of us that have the same opportunities in terms of days, times, seasons, you know, how come some do well and some don't, you know? And here's why. Here's why some do well and some don't. Because some lack the ability to go get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some just lack the ability to go get it. And I realize more and more... As I grow each moment of each day, of each week, of each month, of each year, of each five years, of each 10 years, you know what I'm saying? That once you make a decision, nothing can get in the way of you going to get that which is yours. 
you know? You just have to say what it is, you know? God gives all of us the ability to have transformed minds. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all have the ability to be renewed by having a transformed mindset. Why is it important that we have a transformed mindset? Because we cannot operate in 2014 the way we operated in 2013. I'll even take it a step further. I'll say we cannot operate today, Saturday, the way we operated yesterday, Friday, yesterday, Thursday, yesterday, Wednesday. You can't operate on the same level because this is a new opportunity. This is a new day. And one of my uh, mentors from far, which I'll get a chance to meet him in a couple weeks in May, um, Eric Thomas, you know, he says we have before us opportunity and obligation, you know, and based on how we look at that determines what we consider an opportunity and what we consider an obligation. See, when we consider something to be an obligation, we kind of like move slow. We'll, we'll, we'll take our time. We won't really go to it. We'll say, you know what? I, I, I'll do that later. We procrastinate and we put it off. We put it off. We put it off. We put it off, you know, and it gets to the point where now instead of it being something great, it becomes something that we feel obligated to do. And if we feel obligated to do it, now it becomes a chore, and if it becomes a chore, we push it to the side and we say we don't need to do that anymore. But an opportunity, if we recognize it as an opportunity, then we're on it. We don't waste time with it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're rushing to make decisions, but it means that we're moving forward continually. You know, So we might not necessarily uh, be making a, a, a decision to... Um, get involved in whatever opportunity presents itself or, um, you know, make harsh, rash decisions. But when we know that an opportunity is present, we'll move to the next phase. Okay, so the, here's the first phase. All right, that makes sense. Now here's the next phase. Okay, now after the next phase, what's the next phase? And then after that phase comes up, then we get to a point where we say, you know what? You know, I've, I've, I've you know, deliberated over this long enough, you know, um, I've been going back and forth with this for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe even a year, you know, now we have to get to a point where we separate ourselves from the masses, you know, how do we separate ourselves from the masses? We have to go get it. We have to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Like if we don't go get it, guess what? Somebody else will go get it and somebody else will apply themselves and somebody else will humble themselves and say, you know what? Here's a, here's a chance for me to change my life forever. And I'm not too proud, you know, I'm, I'm not um, arrogant in any way, you know, I don't think I'm above, um, you know, looking at something that can, you know, change my life or not even so much change my life, but just change my mindset or change my income or whatever it is that's going to change you for the better, you know, I'm not too proud, you know, so I'm willing to put in the effort, I'm willing to put in the time, I'm willing to put in the work because I see an opportunity before me. And the only thing that's going to stop me from getting to that opportunity is me saying I'm going to get it, you know. So with that being said, um, I'm here to say that as um, co-founder of the Exodus 100 and our mission statement says we want to empower, encourage and inspire youth to achieve their goals, realize their dreams and transform their communities worldwide. Guess what happens? That mission statement that we use as a nonprofit organization that happens to be my personal mission statement. That is my personal mission statement. I want to empower, encourage, and inspire people to be the best that they can be in whatever endeavor that they choose. All of us have different paths. All of us have different things that we're going to do in life. Why not be the best at what you do? Why should we sit there and just be mediocre and be like everybody else or just have a ho-hum attitude like, okay, it'll happen when it happens. No, you know, let's be the best at what we do, you know, and my mission and my goal in life is to do those three things, empower, encourage, and inspire. That is what my, my focus is here on earth. So I want to take this time out to say thank you for everyone who subscribes to Kenyon Jones on YouTube. Thank you for all my friends and family all over the country, all over the world who support uh, the movement and what we're doing. I even had an opportunity to talk to somebody today who said, you know, I don't necessarily say things on your Facebook page or I might not subscribe you know to, to to what you're doing on youtube but i just want you to know that i see you know and i hear about what you're doing you know so we have to be mindful that uh people are are watching you know people are uh, mindful of what we're doing you know so i want to thank even those who are nondescript who who haven't let me know that they're watching you know it could be hundreds of people you know thousands of people who 
never liked or never, you know, uh, subscribed, you know, if you're watching, you know, obviously something's being said that's helping you. So I would just encourage you to just like, you know, to subscribe, you know, maybe it's something that, um, you know, you could continue to learn from. And it encourages me to know that there's a, you know, a, a couple people out there that appreciate what I'm putting out. You know, it makes me feel like I'm doing something to, to really change, you know, the way the world is moving. So I'm grateful uh, for this opportunity. I'm grateful for this platform. You know, I don't take it for granted at all. I appreciate it. I'm humbled by it. And I just want to say thank you for watching and God bless.